Hi, welcome to my build of King Combat, a 40 inch flying wing. This is getting really exciting now because I'm almost at the final stages and this will be the last video I do, hopefully before the covering. Now, just the thing about the fuel tank, I've got the, the two pipes, the fuel feed and the vent come pressure feed. And at the moment, the pipe comes up to the center of the tank for the, the vent. So it'll be fine like that. But I think people, when I've, I've seen people fly these before and they'll stand them up on the wingtip. So the engine is vertical because it's a side mounted engine. It gives clearance for the prop, it allows you to start it and tune it. If I stand this up with a, fuel ta a full tank and the vent is here, it's going to start siphoning the fuel potentially. So I'm going to move that vent to this top corner so it'll be okay if it's like that, it'll be okay if it's like that. We'll see how that works but that's kind of my, my thinking. Um, on the, the, the trying to make it more robust and the, the, the landing aspect of this, where I fly it's a concrete runway or it's often quite hard short ground we have six months without rain here and it does get very hard so there's, it's not a nice green <coughs> excuse me, pasture unfortunately. So I've made myself a little bit of a skid, this is 3mm plywood and I've kind of emulated it or copied the, the kind of the design a little bit from the, from the fins on the top here and I'm planning on putting that on the front like, like so and just put that back a little bit. It still needs trimming to size a little bit but the idea is that it will protect the engine muffler. I really I really like my old engines and this is a nice muffler silencer from the 1970s early 80s and I really don't want to trash it if I can help it so that will just protect that a little I hope. I'm going to have this mounted or slotted in between the engine lugs and the, the mounting timber so that when I take the bolts out it will come off and I can replace it if necessary if it gets damaged if it gets worn so we'll see how that works and I'll also put a corresponding piece of 3mm ply on the top just to balance that out so I think I said this is this is two pieces of, of 3mm ply I've also been looking at what I could do to the wing tips just to provide a little bit of protection on the, on the tips and where the tips are most likely to touch the ground. And I've decided I'll put some protection in here, I've put a couple of pieces of balsa and bridged that with a 6mm quarter inch piece of balsa there. And I've just got these 3mm plywood tips uh, protectors that will just slot down into there and these are a really tight fit so I probably won't even glue those so they can be replaceable if they start to get loose then yeah I might just put a dab of hot glue this is quarter mil six mil balsa because the covering can come down it will be fastened onto that I can just slot this and put them in still need to do one on the other side I've got the pieces here I just need to uh, to see that see how that into into place but I'm just trying to make this more robust it won't add a lot to the weight and we'll just we'll just see how that that works another thing about the engine is currently these mounts are perfect for my Irvine 20 and that is by design I wanted to make this so I could upgrade the engine to a bigger engine if I found that the Thunder Tiger was a little bit underpowered or I just got used to it and wanted a little bit more oomph. So, but the Thunder Tiger is 3mm, 3mm too small for those mounts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to oh, use that piece of balsa just to demonstrate. I'm going to glue a epoxy, a piece of 3mm plywood onto the mount like that and then I will just drill through and mount the Thunder Tiger engine as normal. If I decide I want the bigger wider mounts like with the Irvine I will just simply cut that off, sand it smooth and mount the Irvine. 
I could have made the mounts differently. I could have had these just widening out slightly so I could have just filed them down. But it was a bit of an afterthought. Um, so if I build another one of these, and if you've been watching the videos, you know I've got, got the ribs and the parts and I'm planning to do that, I may well just widen these a little bit. So that's the engine. The other thing I've got to do is just get all these bits into place. I'm using a, a FlySky six channel receiver. I've always used FlySky and I've never had trouble with them. I think they're, they're, they're great, they're fine, and so I'm gonna carry on using them. And they are very cheap, which is always a, 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 an added bonus. I've got a good quality Futaba switch because the last thing you want is your power going out halfway through a flight because it's not going to end well. And I've got my servos. So I'm looking on mounting all this now and getting the CG right and that will be really good to get this done. Well, we are really on the home stretch now. We're almost there. I've almost got this ready to cover. Just a couple of very small jobs to do, which I'll mention in a minute. What I've just done recently is I've put on this extra strengthener here for the engine mounts as per plan. Uh, actually, it's on the plan it comes out a little bit further, but I didn't really want to put holes in here to hide the screws, and I couldn't, I couldn't really see it made a great deal of difference. I've got the keel on, I've got that nicely profiled at the front. Be interesting to see if this protective keel lasts more than a couple of landings. Uh, or a couple of a couple of flights. We'll we'll see how that goes. It's worth a try. This is how we learn. This is how we kind of develop. So and the engine's nicely bolted on, and it's got that bit of plywood that can come off if I want to put on my Irvine 20. Now inside, I've got the the layout done, and that's all sorted quite nicely now. But it did cause a little bit of consternation at first. The, I wanted to make sure that the tank I could still get in and out once this was finished and the tank is a really tight fit and has to come around like this. So mounting the servo was quite critical. This is a servo that comes through, there's the end of the, the flexible snake and it comes through to the throttle. So I had to mount that far enough back and far enough that way and I had to side mount it because if it was mounted vertically, then it was catching, it would catch the, the lid here that, that's gonna go, the cover that's gonna go on. So that took a, two attempts actually, uh, but I got it right and I've strapped it down and that's really firm now. Switch mounted inside, I just thought that would be neater. The receiver will go here and the battery, lots of room from right down in the nose to right back here. So there's lots of room there for adjusting the CG. And even though it's not completed now, the CG is, if I bring the battery back a little bit, is more or less spot on. Depends whether you have it on the novice or the, uh, the, the expert. If it's on the expert CG, then the battery just needs moving back a tad. But that's, that's great, I haven't added any weight to it or anything, or just, the, and that battery will be great for, for adjusting the CG. Now, the two final jobs I've got to do is to um, fuel proof inside of the engine bay. I've added some more timber, I've cut a little bit, so I just wanna make sure that's all, not, sorry, not the engine bay, the, um, the the, the, the uh, whatever you call it, the, the bay with the, the electronics and the fuel tank. So that needs fuel proofing. I also need to make a hatch cover. I've made a top cover that's gonna go on. I'm just gonna make a couple of hooks that hook under at the front and there'll just be a single attachment, I think. Just something nice and simple to hold that down at the back. And then we're done. It, I haven't done the the attachments here for the, the linkages. I, I, I don't see the point in doing that at the moment. I have done in the past, but I'm gonna leave that until it's covered. I've got, I've got the horns mounted, 
and I'm going to bolt those through. These are M2 bolts and these bolts are actually lovely. I don't know whether the, the camera can show those. These are domed headed bolts that take a one and a half mil one and a half mil hex drive. So, so it's a really nice tight fit. It's precision. It's Oops, won't come out now, it's that tight. Um, so I really like these, these dome-headed 2 mil bolts for holding things like that. They just look a little bit sleeker. And on the servos, I'm using servo screws with an integral washer that I got from modelfixings.com in the UK. And again, these are really uh, wrong size. Oops. These are a really nice tight fit and make fitting your servos a lot easier than using conventional screw heads. So I, I, I love these screws. So anyway, I'm gonna get on, finish the hatch, and then we'll come back and have a very quick look when it's finished. Well, I've now done the, the more or less the final thing, bar the, the, the extra fuel proofing I need to do, and that's fitting the hatch. And I've just fitted this piece of two mil plywood I've got a simple catch here that you just undo, lifts up the back, and then you just pull it back a little bit. There's a couple of locking tabs here, which are just a little bit of spruce, six mil spruce, and um, some, I think it's two mil, could be three mil ply, I can't remember. And they just lock under this, this six mil spar at the front here. The, the actual catch, which is just CA'd on at the moment, just why I got it right, I'm gonna epoxy that in a minute. That just locks in to a hole in the back of this spruce, this rear spruce bar here. And it couldn't be simpler, just locks in very nice and simple. There we go. May need a bit of adjusting once I've got the covering on. I'm really looking forward now to, to getting this covered. It needs to have a, a, a final sanding and then we'll, we'll, we'll get the covering on it. I, I was kind of intrigued as to how heavy this was and, and, and how it compared to the build weight. It's, I've just weighed it and it's 770 grams. Now that's 27 ounces. Now the build weight for this is 32 to 40 ounces or 900 to 1133 grams. So we're coming in at, well, five ounces underweight or uh, we'll say that's about three, uh, 230 grams. So that's really, really, no, 130 grams, sorry. So that's really, really good. It's nice that it's, it's, it's nice and light. Like I say, we've still got the covering to go on, so that's gonna add a little bit of weight. And the only thing that I'm missing is the prop, which again, will add a little bit of weight. So I think we're gonna be right down on the, on the minimum build weight, which is excellent. And I guess a, part, a big part of that is, is the, the electronics, which are a lot lighter these days. So anyway, thanks for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed it. And please come back and see how we get on with the covering.